Ken Abramovitz joins us. He's a board member for, of the Israel Independence Fund, the American Friends of Likud, Americans for a Safe Israel, and the Institute for the Study of Global Anti-Semitism and Policy. Also the founder of SaveTheWest.com. Ken, welcome. Do you think the White House was really behind this resolution? Well, the White House was behind the resolution by definition because anyone working on the resolution would want to know if America's going to veto it or not and would try to get America to agree to the wording. So America was either directly or indirectly involved by definition. Well, the Israelis are saying, you know, more directly and very specifically, you know, and they claim that they have specific evidence of this and they will uh, give this evidence, they say, over to uh, the Trump administration when it's take off it takes office. Do you think that that uh, alleged evidence should be made public? Well, it should be made public uh, also by definition that people have the right to know. But when you have uh, 14 other members of the UN Security Council, they're all talking to each other all the time, particularly on a resolution like this. So by, by definition, there, there was collusion between the uh, 15 members. You know, one of the uh, examples being cited is Secretary of State John Kerry meeting with the New Zealand foreign minister, and that was in the press in New Zealand last month, in that they were talking about a resolution. Let me read you what Brett Stevens in the Wall Street Journal this morning writes. Uh, Brett, Pulitzer Prize winner, of course, saying, quote, the administration is likely being deceptive about last week's UN vote. It means the administration no longer bothers to lie convincingly. We have the spectacle of the U.S. government hiding behind the skirts of the foreign minister of New Zealand, along with the eminent co-sponsors Venezuela, Malaysia, and Senegal, in order to embarrass and endanger a democratic ally. And now, Ken, the World Jewish Congress is calling for hearings and investigation on Capitol Hill to find out what Ben Rhodes did, uh, his alleged involvement, uh, Samantha Power, the UN ambassador. Do you think there should be hearings and some type of an investigation, or would you just let this go? So this is a big deal. There should be hearings on how this came about, but it's also part of a much bigger issue. In this example, the U.S. government is not acting in the interests of the U.S. government. And, and President Obama has a personal responsibility to protect our country and protect our national interests. This uh, resolution goes against American national interests. That's the big scandal. How does it do that? How does it, this resolution that affects Israel and the settlements go against American national interest in your view? Well, Western civilization is fighting for its life, and Israel is the eastern border of Western civilization. And uh, the settlements, so called settlements, are the eastern border of the eastern border of Western civilization and basically save Western civilization from the three major worldwide terror organizations. Iran, Al-Qaeda, ISIS, and uh, the Muslim Brotherhood, or Hamas, as it's called in that area. So Israel's doing everybody a big favor by defending them from these terror organizations. Well, how Israel also defends Christians, Jews, and Muslims in Judea and Samaria, in Israel, and actually protects the Palestin so-called Palestinian Arabs. Well, how about those who say, you know, the settlements, as you know, are illegal under international law and that Israel is just being provocative with the continued settlement building? I mean, uh, the uh, deputy mayor of Jerusalem is saying that they're going to start, you know, permits for uh, hundreds of more houses. Right. All of those criticisms are just a false narrative. Jews have been living in Judea and Samaria for 3,800 years, ever since Abraham uh, first declared that paganism was a false narrative. Jews have more rights to be in Judea and Samaria than Americans have to be in America. Americans only have been here 400 years, and New Zealand 175 years. How does a 400-year-old country tell a 3,800-year-old country where it should live? So the Palestinian Arabs have only been there 150 years. Fi I mean, finally and quickly, what would you say to the Palestinians, and what, what do you hope? I, I, I would hope for the status quo, because I can't think of a better solution than the status quo. And I'd say to the Palestinians, you should thank God that Israel and the Israel Defense Forces protects them every day from the three worldwide terror organizations. Remember, the number one victim of the three terror organizations are Muslims. And, and, and the Jews, Israel is protecting Muslims, Christians, and the whole region, and Europe and America, and the world should be grateful. In a normal world, all the 15 members of the Security Council would have vetoed this resolution 
and just shows how far we are away from a normal world. Well, of course, the Palestinians would say it's the status quo for them means occupation. And that, of course, is the crux uh, of this continued issue. Yeah, Ken it's just a false narrative. Yep. Ken Abramowitz, thank you. Thank you for your uh, views this morning.